welcome back to Toronto Talk Sports and More. It's your guy, NWB. And here I am today with Justin Williams. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, and that is the voice of our special guest. This is a man who has won an Olympic gold for the USA at the Seoul Olympics. He cracked 32 home runs at second base in his career and also made the All Star game in 1995. He is currently an ambassador for Philadelphia Phillies and was an NL champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Nikki Morandini. Hey, guys. I guess I chimed in a little too early there, didn't I? That's all it's right. all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> we caught you off base. <laughs> now, now, Nikki, take us back to where it all started. How did you get into baseball and as opposed to playing other sports? Yeah, I mean, it goes way back. I started playing Little League. I was always into basketball and baseball when I was young and got into Little League, obviously, when I was, you know, five, six years old. And, I grew up in the Pittsburgh area, so I was a huge Pirates fan growing up. And then, uh, you know, I just, I got, I, I went outside all the time. Now, I know kids today, you know, they're on their video games and computers and all that stuff. That wasn't, obviously, we didn't have that back then, but I got outside every day and had a ball in my hand. I was either playing baseball or shooting hoops or doing something with a ball. And, you know, it escalated into me being a really good athlete and, um, I loved playing baseball and basketball and just continued to do it and got better and better and uh, went to college and realized, hey, I might be, uh, be able to, you know, take this pretty far and got drafted in uh, uh, 1988 with the Phillies and um, kind of took off from there. But, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty lucky. I always stayed healthy and I had a good family to support me and I had some great coaches and uh, it all worked out pretty well. Brilliant. I mean, I like hearing success stories, especially when it comes from somebody who, you know, works as hard as obviously you did to get to where you were and to where you are now. But I do have a question for you, sir, since you are athletic and you are essentially one of the best people. Um, how has quarantine been treating you since this all happened? And also, what is the breed of the dog behind you? Oh, golden retriever. He's looking out the window right now. It's actually we're getting a bunch of rain right now. So he's kind of sad that he can't get outside. But um. I was going to say, I don't know what he's going through right now, but I for sure identify with him. Yeah, but that's what quarantine was for me for about yeah. the last three months, right there. That's right. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's been, it's been difficult. I mean, I'm a sports guy. I love watching sports, and I'm really tired of watching games that I know the outcome of. Um, so, it's you know, everything's hopefully will start up here in the next few weeks. Baseball's going to start, and I know Hoops is getting ready to start their thing and, and games at the end of the month. So, I'm excited about that, but it's, it's been difficult. And I'm just like every other fan. Um, I want baseball in my life. I want to be able to go to the ballpark and, you know, hear that crack of the bat and pop of the mitt. And um, it's just been, a, it's been a bad time for everybody. It's uh, there's nothing really good that has come out of this other than uh, maybe some new babies uh, from everybody being home and things like that. But, uh, you know, hopefully uh, I know some States are the, 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 the virus is, come back and the, the numbers are rising but uh you know hopefully by the fall uh you know the games will be going and we can all watch uh watch some live uh, sporting events on tv yeah i'm really hoping for that myself to be honest but i also hope everyone's safe too especially what's going on in orlando and yet they're still deciding to do that there so right yeah it's uh, you know florida is one of the highest cases right now but you know they got these basketball players in a bubble so hopefully uh everything will be all right with those guys yeah. yes sir and, and the MLB has come back with a 60-game season across three divisions. What are your thoughts on that, the season ahead? Well, I, I mean, we need baseball in our life. So anything that we can get, um, we're going to take. But for me, 60 games isn't enough to declare a World Series champion. That's just not enough games for me. But I, I understand, you know, we got to do what we got to do. And 60 games is 60 games. But uh, it'll be interesting because, you know, these players are creatures of habit and you know, you take away the fans, you take away gum, sunflower seeds, you know, you got a social distance in the dugout. Uh, you can't argue with the umpire, no spitting. I mean, there's all kind of rules that uh, go into effect here, and I understand every one of them, but uh, uh, it's going to take some time for these players to adjust to that. Uh, that's, so that, that's my biggest concern. But, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting watching it on TV because you're not going to hear the crowd. You're going to hear the crack of the bat. You're going to hear the pop of the mitt. Um, you're probably going to hear some of the players' comments, you know, because there's not going to be a whole lot going on. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they entertain the viewing 
uh, crowd, you know, they're going to, I don't know what they're going to do. Cause normally, you know, during games they have, you know, they zoom in on all the fans and the, right. you know, in Philadelphia, the fanatics doing some crazy stuff. And um, so it'll be interesting to see how they keep the, the fans entertained. Speaking yeah. of entertaining, actually in the 93 Phillies, you guys were dominant uh, running the NL. Uh, how do you, how do you feel about winning the pennant that year? Yeah, we were dominant until we ran into those damn Blue Jays. That's what we were dominant. But, uh, uh, you know, we – we uh, it was a weird season because we came into spring training and nobody had us picked to do anything. I mean, a lot of publications had us coming in last. And uh, we had brought in a bunch of really good, solid players like Milt Thompson and Jim Eisenreich and Danny Jackson and Mario Duncan and these guys. None of them are superstars, but all solid players. And we just really jailed from the get-go and – uh, it came out of the gates eight and one. Then the Philly fans started to, you know, hey, this team's got something special here. And, you know, we were getting 40 to 50,000 fans at Bet Stadium every day. And it was just a magical season. And, you know, we just came up, uh, thanks to Joe Carter, lovely Joe Carter. Uh, you know, it just came, we came up a little bit short, but it was a heck of a run, that's for sure. No doubt. And uh, that, that must have been a, an emotional day, game six, October 23, 1993. You're up, you're in front early in the game, and then that ninth inning, it just turned on his head. So it was a great day for Toronto, but it's probably a horrible day for yourself and the team. What was that like? Yeah, you know, uh, we were down three games to one, and really the, the key to that whole series was that 15-14 to 14 game. We had a 14-9 to nine lead going into the eighth inning, couldn't hold it. And, and that really changed the whole series, because instead of being 2-2, two and two, it's 3-1. We know how hard it is to come back from a 3-1 deficit. So Schilling goes out, pitches a gem, gets the series to 3-2. We have a little bit of momentum. You know, we have the lead in the ninth. We're feeling good because we really felt that if we won game six, we were going to take game seven because we had one of our best pitchers in Terry Mulholland getting ready to go. There you go. They see yeah, something. I think, I think the double uh, <laughs> So uh, it was devastating. Uh, you know, I think it was – I think we were up six to four, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, Mitch Mitch was just running out of gas. He didn't have a whole lot left. And uh, he just made a bad pitch to Joe Carter. And, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, uh, like I said, it was a heck of a run. And best teammates and best coaching staff I was ever involved with in the big leagues. It was just tremendous. And um, you also spent a bit of time in Toronto during your career. How did you find it as a city, just in general? Yeah, I, I got traded over there. Um, at the end of the 2000 season, I think, it, no, end of the 90, yeah, 2000 season, I was with Phillies and I got traded over and, and it was a good trade for me because I got to go to a team that had a chance to go to the playoffs. We didn't end up getting there, but, but our manager at the time there was Jim Fergosi and he was the manager that managed me for my first seven years in the big leagues in Philly. So uh, it was nice to go there and you know, that's back in the day when Halliday and, uh, and um, uh, oh, Chris Carpenter were young, young puppies, just kind of learning how to pitch. But uh, uh, I love Toronto. I really did. I, I stayed at the hotel at the uh, ballpark there. Mm -hmm. so I was only there for a couple of months. Uh, and it was, it, I love the city. I love the people there. Uh, you know, for the, the ballpark for me was okay because it was turf and it was indoors. Right. Um, but the fans were great in uh, the city. I didn't get to go out as much in the city as I wanted to, um, but it's a beautiful city. It's clean. Um, I'd love to come back, actually, and, and, you know, see a little bit more of it. We'd love to have you back. Um, it's funny you mention this, actually, because my Oma, she's 81 years old, and she's the biggest Blue Jays fan on the face of this planet. So when I told her I was interviewing you, she actually asked me to ask you a question. Sure. So she wants to know, what was your most memorable game and why is it so memorable? Yeah, uh, there's two games. One, I turned an unassisted triple play in 1992. There they go. There they go. There it is. One. There it is. There's two. Run the first. Did he get it? Oh, he okay, tagged okay. He got it. That's right. Tagged him. How about that? All right, just like you described, Whitey, <laughs> and unassisted, right? That's the risk of it. <laughs> and um, I learned the importance of it after the game. I was the first second baseman to do it in the regular season. 
Cool. And I was the ninth player to ever do it in the history of the game. Now, there's only been 15 in the history of the game, so um, it doesn't happen very often. And for me to do it uh, was pretty special. So that's one game. I think the other game would be game six against the Braves in that same 93 year. Um, I hit a line drive off Greg Maddox's leg my first at bat. Um, and I think I got him pretty good, and I think it affected him later in the game. I ended up hitting a triple off him in the sixth inning uh, to kind of seal the win for us. And uh, so and doing that in Philly in front of 55,000 Philly fans and getting us into the World Series, that was a pretty special game for me. Sure. That would be a memory to keep, yes. Yeah. Now, um, just fast forward to today. The, the Phillies have made a number of moves in the last couple of years with Coach Girardi taking over at the helm. You've also got Didi Gregorius, Andrew McCutcheon, Gene Segura, and Bryce Harper now in the clubhouse. How are you feeling about their prospects for this season? Yeah, I, I you know, I, th I think the, the time off has actually helped us. Uh, you know, McCutcheon now can come back on time. Uh, Arietta was banged up in spring training. He's ready to go. We had a couple of relievers that weren't going to be ready for the season. They're ready to go. So the layoff has actually probably helped, helped us from a health purpose. But um, I think we're going to be pretty good. Now, our schedule is really tough because we got to play the AL East. And, you know, you got the Yankees, Boston, Toronto, and Tampa, all really good teams. So, but, you know, looking at that, everybody else in our division has the same, pretty much the same schedule, too. So we're all kind of in it with a tough schedule, but our offense should be really good. And the front end of our rotation, we picked up Zach Wheeler. Yeah. Uh, the front end of the rotation should be good. Um, what it's going to boil down for us, I really believe, is the back end of the rotation and the bullpen. And if those two things can, you know, hold up and stay steady, I think we got a chance to make the playoffs. I really do. That's good. And Which is what worries us Blue Jays fans. What's that? Hey. Which is what worries us Blue Jays fans. Yeah, well, you guys, you're in a little bit of a different situation. You've got so much young talent. Um, you know, if, if you don't uh, make the playoffs this year, you still have a pretty bright future with all the young talent you have. So, um, unfortunately for you, you have to be in the Yankees, in, you know, division every year. And, you know, they just keep piling it on with talent every year. Yeah. yeah. No doubt. <laughs> now, speaking of being – Speaking of young players, you were able to represent your country at the Olympics in Seoul. You won gold in 1988. Tell us about that. That, yeah, that was pretty amazing. In 1987, I got invited to what they call the Intercontinental Cup, and it took place in Cuba. And they invited about 20 college athletes down there to play in a tournament. And uh, the coach at that time was Mark Marquis, who was a big-time Stanford head coach, college coach. So I went down and I played really well. I hit over 400 and led the team in several categories. And uh, it was kind of like a showcase for me for Marquis because he was going to be the Olympic coach. So um, got invited to participate in the Olympic tryouts. They brought in 50 players. They had to cut it down to 20. And I was fortunate enough to make the team. And, uh, you know, to play for your country is, is pretty amazing. And we toured the – we toured the entire United States and played in a lot of minor league uh, stadiums and ballparks and uh, tried to get ready. Then we went over to Italy for a few weeks, Japan for a few weeks, and then we ended up in Seoul, Korea, where the Olympics were. And uh, we just played really well. You know, I had Jim Abbott, uh, Andy Bennis, Ben McDonald, Charles Nagy. I mean, our pitching staff was off the charts. And then we had Tino Martinez and Ed Sprague and Scott Service and a uh, bunch of big name uh, players that all, I, I bet uh, 15 of our 20 guys played in the big leagues for a long time. So it was a pretty special team. And obviously I still have the gold medal from that year. Uh, uh, pretty incredible, actually. Uh, Damn. Special. I mean, yeah, it just reps in your country at all is amazing. Now you're coming home with a title and a championship and going down in history. I can only imagine what that feels like. But just to kind of break off from baseball for a quick second, we uh, heard through the grapevine that you are a big wine connoisseur. What is your wine of choice? I don't know where you heard that from. I mean, I, I have, I'm not, I wouldn't call it a connoisseur, that's for sure. Um, I'm a sweet white wine kind of guy. Uh, I'll have an occasional red wine with some, you know, steak or something like that. But by no means, I'm not, a, I don't know a lot about wine, to be honest with you. I just, you know, I taste it and I either like it or I don't like it. But uh, uh, I'm a more of a sweet white wine kind of guy. Um, you know, but uh, 
I'm not a big wine guy. I'm not a big drinker to, in general. Um, uh, I don't really like to drink with my meals too much. Um, but, uh, you know, my boys are all older now. So I once in a while have to play some, uh, you know, drinking games with them. They have a new, you ever see the new die game out now? It's like on a big table and you throw a die in the air and you have to catch it before it rolls off the table. And if you don't, you got to, it's, it's the <laughs> big right now. <laughs> That's good. That sounds like a... It's actually pretty fun because I went to my son's college. He goes to UCLA and I went to their frat and I ended up playing it for like five hours. So Jesus. It is actually pretty fun. Pretty I'm fun. assuming you won. <laughs> yeah, we kept the table. We did win. So, Jesus. Yeah. Wow. It was a scary day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was a scary morning afterwards. The next yeah. Day. <laughs> yeah, it was. So I'm assuming that's advice you wouldn't pass on to a young athlete then? Uh, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> well, what, what would you pass on to a young athlete then who's trying to make it into the MLB? You know, one, I just, uh, you know, you got to work at it. Um, it's not going to come easy. Um, you got to work every day. You know, like I said, I made, I made baseball fun. Uh, me and my brother would always go out in the yard and play games. But while you're playing games, you're getting better and you're improving. I always tell the story. We had a one, a one, one uh, unattached car garage in my when I was growing up, and we had a stone driveway. And I would come out with a tennis ball, and I'd get about you know 40, 50 feet away from that garage, and I'd throw a tennis ball against that small concrete wall that was on the right side of the garage door, and I'd have it come back to me, and it would take some funky bounces on that stone driveway, and I'd try and catch it. And I made a little game out of it that if I missed it, the guy got on base, and if I caught it, he was out. And, I would do that for hours and really uh, as even though I was having fun doing this I was getting so much better at catching a ball and working on my mechanics and working on my accuracy and throwing and stuff I really believe that's a big reason I became such a good defensive player so uh, you just got to work on your game believe in yourself have fun doing it and uh, uh, if you have a dream of being in the big leagues then obviously it's, it's a long haul uh, sometimes it's uh you only need one person to think you're going to be good, you know, one college coach, one pro scout. And if you can get that person to, to believe in you and, and, you know, bring you to college and sign you in the big league, you got a chance. And I think that's what anybody wants is just a chance. That's it. One chance, one opportunity. Yep. Um, that's what it's all about. Now, you had the opportunity of playing the All-Star game in 1995. Tell us about that. And also, do you think the All-Star game should count, once again, for a playoff um, home field advantage? Um, what was the second part of that question? The, the All-Star game used to count towards home field advantage in the World Series. Do you think it should go back to that? Well, first off, uh, playing in All-Star game is incredible. Um, I was pretty fortunate in 95 to make the team. Um, I had a good first half. Uh, there were so many good second basemen in the league at that time. It was tough to get into the All-Star game, so I was pretty lucky to get in. But I um, had a blast. It was in Texas. It was hot as hell about 120 degrees in Texas, I remember. And we actually won the game. We had three hits in that game. They were all solo home runs, and we won three to two. So it was fun to win. But uh, I don't I, – I think the All-Star game should just be a fun game. That everybody wants to come out and play, put on a show. Um, I did not like it where um, the winning uh, division – you know, got to host the World Series or got to, you know, the home field advantage. I did not like that. I didn't think that was fair. But, uh, um, you know, just let these guys come out. The home run derby's awesome, you know, and people like watching that. And just let them come out and uh, display their talents. And, and, and I don't think you have to put uh, uh, any more importance on it than it is. I agree with that, actually. I, I don't think it's – well, didn't think it was fair. But uh, – okay. Being at the All-Star game, you would have approached and come up with a lot of different uh, talent facing you. What was the most, or at least memorable, maybe challenging opponent you had to face personally? In an All-Star game or just in general? In, in general. In oh, general. in general, I, uh, that's a no-brainer, Randy Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> please, please explain. Yeah, no-brainer. You know, I usually didn't play against Randy. And when there was a really, really, really tough lefty, they would sit me down and play a right-handed hitter, which a lot of lefties had that happen to them when they faced Randy Johnson. But I'm with the Cubs in 98, 
and we're playing, or no, it was 99, I believe it was. And we're playing in Arizona when Randy was with the Diamondbacks. And I didn't start. And our third baseman was Gary Gaetti. He got sick in the middle of the game. So I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not a third baseman. I won't go into this game. Well, they moved Manny Alexander, who was playing second, to third. And they brought me into the game. I'm like, all right. So I got to face Randy for the first time ever. Um, this is all through his Cy Young years. I mean, he's just filthy. Mm-hmm. And uh, my first at bat off him, he throws me three 98 mile an hour fastballs, paints them on the outside corner. I don't really see any of them. Don't swing. Take my three strikes. Walk right back into the dugout. I'm like, holy crap, is this guy good? So fortunately, unfortunately for me, I had to face him again in the ninth inning. Um, and they were playing me way to shift because they didn't think I could pull Randy Johnson. And I don't blame them because I didn't think I could pull him either. So they're playing infielders, outfielders are all playing me to hit the ball the opposite way. But this is how dumb some pitchers are. He tries to throw me a first pitch slider. Now, he just struck me out the previous at bat on three 98 mile hour fastballs that I didn't even sniff. He throws me a slider and it breaks right over in the middle of the plate. And I stay in on it and I pull a triple down the right field line off him. My, my, second at bat off them. So um, they come to Chicago two weeks later, and because I got a triple off them, the manager started me against them. <laughs> so, um, I think I ended up going 0 for 2 or 0 for 3 with a walk off them, but he didn't strike me out in that second game. But uh, he was definitely by far one of the most fil- – I mean, he's 6'11". Mm-hmm. You know, he's got that long arm reach and um, just, just tough to hit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of hitting, uh, I just want to get your thoughts on the, the Houston Astros controversy uh, of the last year or so. I mean, uh, they're going to be playing in empty stadiums, so the fans won't be able to boo them, but do you think there might be some retribution from players? Well, you know, they got lucky because uh, there would have been some retribution, I believe. Um, but now with the, the virus, I mean, you really you don't want to start a brawl because you know yeah, <laughs> whether well, everybody's gonna throw their everybody gonna throw their masks on before they come together at you know and and there's nothing like you said there's not gonna be any fans in the stand there's not gonna be any boos or things you know directed towards them so they got pretty lucky nobody's even talking about it anymore you know it was the big talk of town until uh you know covid came in and then it kind of went away so um you know it was a sad situation um, when you have start having to, to, to deal with video cameras and stealing signs that way, uh, it's just it's just not right. And um, I don't really think to this day it really bothers them at all. They didn't seem very apologetic when they had their big press conference. They didn't have much to say. Uh, you know, they got their championship, and uh, that won't be taken away from them. So uh, if it was up to me, if I was commissioner, I would have probably suspended players. Because they're the ones that – I mean, they suspended the coach and the general manager, but it really, really was the players that, that did all this. So um, I would have suspended the players. You know, I wouldn't have obviously suspended them all at one time. Maybe, you know, one guy to the first two weeks, next guy, whatever it may be. But uh, there had to be some repercussions for them, and there really wasn't anything. So yeah. with the whole Astros situation then, um, like – Obviously, this is taken as, like as a lesson because this isn't the first time it's been done within baseball or within sports in itself. Do you feel like the rules should be harder when it comes to that? Like this should be a like a more penalized offense? Oh, no question. No question. Um, I don't know what that would be, though. Um, what, I don't know what a fair penalization would be. Uh, do you say they can't win a title for five years or you can't Ooh. go to the playoffs for five You know, I don't know. Is that something that, that, you know, you cheated big time and, um, you know, they could very easily win the championship this year and get another title. We, I mean, I don't know. So I think anytime you cheat the game like that as a team, uh, there's got to be some, some major penalties in place. Now, like, you know, suspending the manager and the GM and, and for a year, that's all fine and dandy, but no, you know, really what it is, it's 60 games. They just got suspended right. for 60 games. So, um, you know, I don't know what the, the penalty would be, but it's got to be a little bit more than what it was, that's for sure. I agree. I think Mickey Morandini should be the new commissioner of baseball. That's just my thoughts. So. Well, for as much as our commissioner makes, <laughs> I'd take that job in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Good if no. you can get it. 
<laughs> rolling with the idea of you being commissioner, just a fun little question for you there. Um, you would have a hand in an expansion and what's happening for new teams coming in. If you, good sir, could select one team within North America to expand to, who, like what, what city would you expand to? No, no, no. Give him two. You have two teams. So two teams? Okay. So, two teams. So what city would I take them to? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I'd like to see a team back in Montreal. I'm not going to be – I'm not going to lie to you. I, 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 I don't know if they'd get the support that they needed up there, but Montreal is a neat little town to play in. It is. Um, so that would be one. Uh, the other town, that's a good question. Uh, we got to get it baseball out of Florida. Yeah, we'll get hockey out of Florida too. My, Miami's a joke, and and um, Tampa never, you know, they don't. They're in a bad area where nobody goes to the game. So um, maybe Vegas. I can see Vegas. Yeah. You know, Vegas maybe one. Um, that's a good question. I don't know what other big cities there would be that would want baseball. Um, maybe up in Portland, or you know, I don't know. Um, but Vegas and Montreal would probably be a two pretty good spots i think so you had mentioned montreal there what do you think about the uh tampa bay x-rays kind of thing where it's montreal expos and uh or sorry a tampa bay devil rays or just rays tampa bay rays yeah. and the montreal expos kind of combining together i don't know how that would work because for a player one do you have two houses you know mm-hmm. two that's that's too much i mean it's not cheap to you know live on the road year round believe me i know that and mm-hmm. Uh, you know, do you keep your family in Tampa? Do you keep your family in Montreal? Do they keep going back and forth? Uh, I, I just, I think it's a stupid idea. And uh, just pick a city and, and let them play there. You know, and if you want to continue to play in Tampa and have, you know, 5,000 fans every game, then, you know, that, that's on the owner. But uh, um, I, I don't think two, a two-city team would ever work. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I was going to say, yeah, and sorry, another question, really quick follow-up there. Uh, when you were in Toronto, did you ever go see other parts of Canada, like Vancouver, for instance? You said you've been in Montreal, so would you think Vancouver could host a team? I've never been there. Um, oh. So I don't know. Really, Montreal and Toronto are the only two Canadian cities I've ever been in, and they were obviously both related to the baseball part of it. But uh, I don't know. You tell me. Is Vancouver – do they still have their hockey team? I'm not a big hockey guy, but – yeah, they still have their hockey team. They lost their basketball team. Yeah, do they follow their hockey team pretty well up there, or is it depending it's on re- the or losing? It, it, it's, it's a religion. When they lost in, I want to say, 2011 playoffs, they almost burnt the city down. So, yeah, so, yeah uh, I mean, if they, could, if they feel like they could get, you know, 30, 35,000 fans at a game pretty, uh, you know, continuously, then, yeah, Vancouver. I've never been. Is it a, I'm sure it's a beautiful city. It's a uh, nickname Northern Hollywood. So essentially they yeah. barely get snow. There's a lot of filming. Like it's a big uh, movie industry business. Like me and I would move there in a heartbeat. I mean, so. that would work. Maybe go Montreal and Vancouver. I don't know. Now you're close to see. Uh, <laughs> too much baseball in Canada? <laughs> Not enough Never baseball. Too much baseball. Never Not enough, baseball. huh? That's right. Not enough. I can't <laughs> wait for the season to come back, Nikki. Uh, I, I'm like you. I've been hanging out for it since opening day has been happening in April or well, like March, so this will be good. Yeah, let's just hope the players stay safe because if, if this thing gets back out of control, you know, like they say it's going to here, it's going to, you know, I know in the big, you know, Arizona, Florida, um, you know, all these hot states, California, they, they were the ones that originally were supposed to host baseball, you know, they were going to host all, and they're the four worst states out there right now, which I thought the heat was supposed to kill this damn thing, and um so I don't know, but we let's hope these guys are safe and, you know, when they're away from the ballparks, they're safe. And um, I'm still a little apprehensive if they'll get a full 60 games in. Cross your fingers. I hope they do. I hope they get full 60 and a full playoff run. And and hopefully we get a cure for this thing, you know, and, uh, you know, we can start all, start all fresh next spring. I hope that's what happens. Yeah. That's the goal. Um, before, before we get to out of here, Mickey, I believe Justin has a game for you. Justin, you want to take it away? Yes, sir, I do. So, mister, I have a game. It's called True and False. There's only five questions. Okay. Um, we're going to test your baseball history knowledge. Oh, shit. And if the answer is false, I'll explain to you why it's false. Okay. okay. All right, ready for this. <clears throat> Shoot, sorry. 
Uh, question number one, true or false? Alex Rodriguez hit more than 690 home runs during his baseball career. Ooh. I don't think he hit more than 690. I'm going to say false. It's true. He did. He did. I was thinking 686. What did he hit? Uh, he hit, what was it? Uh, 696. 696. Oh. All right. He couldn't get the 700? He sucks. <laughs> yeah, tell him to go home. Uh, true or false, Babe Ruth won seven World Series championships. Oh, geez, you're going way back. Seven World Series championships. I'm going to say false. It is true, Babe Ruth. Actually. All right, you're doing, you're doing all the true ones, so I'm going to go true next time. It'll probably be false. <laughs> I mean, he win? Um, it, uh, seven. Seven on the nose. Yep. Right. Uh, I'm for two. It's all good. It's all good. You might have to retape this last <laughs> 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 I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> all right. Bob Dorr was the second baseman for Milwaukee. Was this, yeah, second baseman for Milwaukee Brewers. True or false? Bob Dorr. What year is this? How old do you think I am? <laughs> I just think you're really talented and smart. So I was like, let's give him really I tough am questions. Smart, but it's got to be within my. I'm only With 54. His, in his wheelhouse, man. What year did he play? Um, actually, I do. I got to do a quick Google search on this one. Yeah, you, uh, Bob. I'm gonna say you had two truths, so I'm gonna say false. Uh, you, good sir, are correct. It is false. Who did he play he, for? I don't know who he played. So he was the second baseman, but not for Milwaukee Brewers, but it was for the Boston Red Sox. Boston. All right. One, three. In baseball terms, I'm hitting 333. Get back to the count. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an all-star. <laughs> all right. This, this one goes back to the 40s. Uh, Bob Feller earned a triple crown in the 40s. True or false? Triple crown would be wins, strikeouts, and innings? Yes. For a pitcher? I think that's true. He did in 1948. Yes. Okay. He was pretty darn, pretty darn good. He was. Uh, <clears throat> this is more recent. Barry Bonds achieved more than 3,000 hits in his career. True or false? That would be false. Yes. Do you know the exact number for a bonus mark? I don't know the exact number. He's probably, I'm going to say in the... 2,800 range. Oh, you were so close. Uh, 2,935. Yeah. Well, he walked about 80 gazillion times. So, <laughs> I mean, really, if, if, if he gets to hit like normal hitters, he would have broke 3,000 even. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. And last but not least, sir, Billy Sunday stole more than 300 bases. True or false? Billy Sunday. Don't know who Billy Sunday is. I'm gonna say true. Uh, false. Two hundred and forty-six. Forty-six. Did you come up with these questions? No, I had to Google them. <laughs> 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 I was sitting there and I was like, some of them I knew. I was like, okay, I knew the Barry Bonds one. That was yeah, that was cool. And then some of them I was like, I actually, to be fair though, I googled um, tough baseball questions. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so uh, I was, yeah. So, so I was, I was what like, three for six. It's pretty good still. Yeah, I'll take it. Not as yeah. good as I should be, but... We can retape this. Yeah. I'm all right. <laughs> when you're back in 500. Corona, I'll take 500. When you're uh, back when in Florida, we'll, um, we'll definitely have to have you in the studio. And we'll, we'll play again for sure. There you go. Mickey, we appreciate your time this morning. Um, sure. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, for our audience, you can find Mickey on Instagram at MickeyMorandini12. And... Mickey, do you have any other social media handles for our audience to follow you on? I'm not a big social media guy. I do Instagram. That's what I do. Um, I stay off Facebook. And um, I have recently started, my wife got me involved in TikTok. <laughs> so now I got to watch TikTok for about five hours every day because I can't get off of it. So at some point, I'm going to have to either, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't signed an account yet. I just like watching all the videos. But. I'm, I got to get off that. That's addicting. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, yeah. It, it's a time consumer. It is. <laughs> Although today with it raining out, I might be on all day. You never know.
Uh, it, quarantine is like that. We found different activities, so yep, just I the agree. way it is. Yep. Uh, for our audience, this has been NWB for Toronto Talk Sports and More for Love the Six. Let's connect. Thank you for watching. Please click the like button and leave us a comment with your feedback. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications to see more engaging and interactive content. Toronto Talk Sports and more for the love of the six. Let's connect.